I think many people will agree that Pokemon games have never looked as impressive as they're going to look next year when Pokemon Legends Arceus comes out. Just the trailers alone are getting us so hyped and words will not cut it in describing how beautiful they look. I just want to look at them again and again. I mean, they're set in the past, in a time when humans and Pokemon were not exactly as, you know, together as they are in the modern times. Obviously, Pokemon are more wild and less tamed. Sure, you can still capture them, but that's probably a very, very recent development in the setting of this game. And it is gorgeous. Just the concept, the... the... I mean, I'm not just talking visually. I'm talking about the ideas that went into this game to make it so different because at the core it's much different than other games I mean it's almost identical but like it just goes so far in changing how we look at the games because I just I don't know how to say it it's just I, I mean I have to play it to know for sure but Your whole purpose in this game is unlike any past core series game. So obviously it's a little bit different. You still catch Pokemon, but your, your purpose is just so much more free. You still battle, of course. And of course the graphics are better than they've ever been. Obviously people will find reasons to complain, but if you're only comparing them to the past Pokemon games, then of course they're better. Like everything's so old fashioned, like it's the culture, the, the settings, the story itself, the, the lore, it's going to be... Just look at this, it's, it's just so, so impressive. Seeing this trailer today for the first time, when I, I just watched it for the first time a few minutes ago, and this is my second time going through it, oh, I'm blown away, I'm blown away. I don't think I actually even paid attention the first time because it's impressive. And like, we still don't know all the details, but we know lots of, you know, tidbits about certain characters, the setting, the missions, the Pokemon. I mean, just look at the, the mechanics itself. Obviously, it's a semi-open world, not a complete open world, but a semi-open world. RPG where you can freely move and interact with your opponents. I never thought that I'd be this like, hyped. Like, I knew that Pokemon would eventually go in this direction and I've been hoping, hoping for something different like to break the mold because breaking the mold is always exciting. You know, you don't want the same old, same old recipe, the same old, same old formula. They broke the mold in a completely new direction. Like, not only is it set in the past, not only do you have to do different things than in, in the original games because it's set in the past and therefore, like, the story is different, the mission's different. It's just so beautiful. Again, like, the artwork, the culture, the story, I, can't, I don't know everything, but I know that I'm impressed. That trailer is just beautiful. I cannot wait until January, and I'm a little bit disappointed that I have to play anything else before that. Even though it's set in the past of a region we have been to before in Gen 4, the Sinnoh region, it is important to note that in this period of time, for some reason in the timeline, it was known under a different name, which is actually not that unusual. The Sinnoh region in this century, whether this is 50 years ago or 200 years ago, we don't know for sure, but it was called the Hisui region. And the weirdest thing is that instead of the Sinnoh starters, you get a, a choice between a Cyndaquil, a Rowlet, and an Oshawa. And here's the thing, I've heard rumors, so do not take this as fact, but here's the rumor. The rumor is that the starters are gonna get regional variants. Not the starters themselves, but their evolutions. So we might get Hisui and Typhlosion, Hisui and Decidui and Hisuian Samurat. And when I heard that rumor, I thought it was very likely 
exciting to think about, but again, it's not confirmed, so don't take it as fact. But I will tell you that I think it's clever because the CGI is an archer, samurai is a samurai, but I think they could make it go into the ancient Japan theme or setting because come on, a samurai, an archer, hopefully it's true. If it's not true, it's no big deal. Don't take it as confirmed yet. I, I mean, again, we used to think it was open world. When I first saw the first trailer for this, I was like, it's open world. I wanted an open world Pokemon game for a long, long time. Imagine it. But then we find out that it is not a true open world. It is actually made of very, very, very many small segments. So technically, it's only open world in the same way that you can have the wild area in Sword and Shield, which again, was pretty fun. So we'll call it semi-open world. But still, the artwork is very simplified, but still gorgeous. Uh, like, the animations obviously were improved over time enough to impress me, which is all I care about. And just, uh, I don't know what matters more. How it looks in the graphics, or just the beauty of the setting, the past, and the artworks symbolizing the past, because you know, sure, the modern times is great and all if you have big cities and stuff like that or, or exotic places, but it's a genius setting. Not only because it's gorgeous, but because it's interesting. And that's what we want. We want something that's both gorgeous and interesting. The battles themselves are very interactive. The backgrounds are very gorgeous. I don't know how big this region is going to be, but just like Sword and Shield, because of the 3D animation, because of the semi-open world nature, these regions and these games will look and be bigger than any game before them. Because we are not in the in the age of, of, of 8-bit or in the age of 2D sprites. We are in the future. I didn't imagine this when I was a child, but part of me did. Part of me was like, huh, if this is what they look like now, imagine 10 years from now, imagine 20 years from now. And look, for me, it, it came true around the era of Pokemon Platinum is when I first started playing Pokemon. And look at the Sinnoh region now. We know that there's two forms of battle. Uh, when you're battling Pokemon, obviously you need to have your own Pokemon. Uh, the player character can get hurt. That's why you have to actively dodge. That's why it's like a, a, a semi-open world RPG. You actively dodge because we have seen in a previous trailer that if the player gets enough damage from wild Pokemon, you black out. I've always wanted to see that. And now, yeah, if you're not careful, gotta watch out. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's gonna look better in person when we're playing. These are just screenshots. Obviously, they don't do it justice. And sure, and of course, in order to protect yourself, you first have to catch Pokemon using these old-fashioned steampunk wooden Pokeballs. Uh, I'm assuming they're made from ap apricorns. Very historic. Fits into the canon. I don't know exactly what the time period is. I don't know if this is 100 years ago. I don't know if this is 300 years ago, but it's somewhere in the past. Not too far, obviously, because we'll, we'll talk about that. Like, But like, yeah, the mechanics, they look like you have a lot to do. Like first, we know about the story that you're like, uh, the Pokedex is just brand new. You have to discover these Pokemon for the first time, study them, write about them, capture them, interact with them. And obviously based on the time of day and the weather, the Pokemon will all interact in different ways. You know, some are hostile, some are shy. I mean, Sh Sword and Shield did very good on that, but I think they will go beyond now. They have no reason not to go beyond that. We have uh, the, the local professor who I believe his name is Laventon. Just like all the professors before him, he's named after a plant, specifically lavender, and he's even wearing lavender. And his clothing suggests that his researchers are not local to the Hisui region. They probably came from uh, overseas, I'm assuming, because there's, you know, overseas Pokemon, the starters here. So I think it's a fair assumption that not everyone in this game is a local Hisuian. They're probably from overseas, and that's why they have such, I want to say, uh, European, British, you know, posh suits, you know, like explorers in in the time when the world was still being explored and that's exciting uh but the battles will not be solely turn-based they might be partially turn-based because you know like you can see the the action order right there above my head it's uh 
Looks like Lucario gets two attacks for every one of Gastrodon's attack, which I don't know if that's set or if that's just incidental. The user interface looks gorgeous. Very um, brush stroke font, very, very thematic, very clean. Um, this character is called Commander Kamado, and he is confirmed to be the ancestor of the modern day Professor Rowan, which is ironic because Laventon is the local professor in this game, meaning uh, Rowan's ancestor is simply the commander of the, gal the galaxy exploring team or whatever, and I don't know what they are. Obviously, they are the precursor of Team Galactic, but obviously the player character has been confirmed to be helping them study Pokemon, so I think the story might take a turn that we're not expecting. Maybe not. Uh, it's also been confirmed that there's two styles for wild battles. There's strong style, which is more classic, the one we're familiar with. Strong style means you sacrifice moving and dodging and you attack with full power. There's also agile style. Agile style is where you get to attack as many times as you can, but you sacrifice power. So your attacks are weaker, but you get to attack faster. So, and I assume you have to move. So I don't know for sure what the story will, uh, how will it unfold. I don't know if there's going to be an adversary or bad guys. If they want to actually go for in a unique direction, they won't have anything like that because they want to um, be completely unique. That's what I would do. Interesting how much information you have to like gather. So it's like a, just like a modern day Pokedex, except instead of a, a device, it's just all on paper. Very old fashioned. And you'll be getting all this data gathered for the Galaxy team. And it's very old fashioned because you got to like craft everything yourself, craft your medicine, your smoke bombs to help you catch Pokemon or escape Pokemon. Uh, Pokeballs probably made from apricorns and you, you just craft them yourself very different gather materials and 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 Apricorns and herbs to craft all these things instead of just buying them at the store Very surprised when I found that out. <laughs> I was also happy to see the the Galarian wheezing there the Galarian wheezing um, Suggests that there's some people from Galar visiting back when Hisui was first being you know Discovered by people from overseas in my theory. So yeah, we have new Pokemon like Wordier, which is uh, the evolution of Stantler and Basculegion, which is the evolution of Basculin uh, New types new Pokemon uh, This is not a new Pokemon. This is a regional variant uh, Hisui and Braviary flying psychic type flying you saw it in the trailer flying you around very exciting Hisui and Growlithe fire rock very cute and popular uh, you get a promotional costume based on the Growlithe if you purchased the game early or something. Pretty cool. Um, again, this map seems to confirm that the segments of the world are divided. So it might not be a true open world, and that's why I'm calling it semi-open world. And this further confirms that there's customization in the game. <laughs> the, the, the Crow Gunk mask looks cute, but like... I also love how it's not just traditional Japanese garments, it's also traditional British looking garments from like the 1800s. So yeah, they're going they're going all out for the traditional thing for both for both regions, like both European and Japanese. So I think it looks um, very uh, thematic and exciting. Like I did not think that they would go this far. Why should I be surprised? They did the same thing in Sword and Shield, and I was impressed there too. Yeah, there's the, the, the phone that's shaped like Arceus. I still don't know anything about that, and I think it's weird given the time period, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, here's a character who happens to resemble the modern-day Karen from Team Galactic, so obviously it's his ancestor. Uh, there's, as we saw in the trailer, certain Pokemon with red eyes. I don't know what's up with them. I don't know what's wrong with them but they are attacking the player and you have to eventually capture them if you want, I guess. I think they're called Alpha Pokemon, but I don't know anything else. Then we have this person called uh, Iskin. He's one of the Wardens, I forgot to mention so far. Wardens are Guardians, ex almost exactly like how in Sun and Moon there was Trial Captains, yeah. I think Wardens are equivalent to Trial Captains, so they're taking a page from the Alola region, or maybe the whole region learned it from from here because this takes place in the past and in my opinion I think Iskin most mostly 
resembles a character like maybe Marlin from Unova or Nessa from Galar. So he's either one of their ancestors, maybe both. Um, and also the trailers have also shown that there are some people who dress in blue with the Pentagon on their chest. So they are part of the Dialga clan and other people dress in white with a circle on their chest and they're part of the Palkia clan. So Iskin is part of the Dialga clan and he is um, a warden who I think has to do with Basque Legion. Then there's uh, Arezu. She obviously resembles Mars, so we're gonna assume she's Mars' ancestor. Um, she's also part of the Dialga clan and she's also a warden, I think, for one of the other Pokemon we've seen. Then we have Leon, who is obviously the ancestor of Clay from Unova. And I think he's with the new Pokemon Cleavor, which we haven't shown yet. Um, pretty young, but I hear he's talented from the Pokemon pages that I've read about. And then we have uh, Mai, which is clearly the ancestor of, of Maylin. Who is a character you may not be familiar with, because, but she was in the original Pokemon Platinum. Uh, she's partners with this Munchlax, and she's the warden of the Pokemon Wordier. And she even has Stantler designs on her clothing, and she's also part of the Dialga clan. Um, yeah, these character designs are gorgeous, just like very attractive, very, uh, very Pokemon-esque though. Very Pokemon-esque. They're taking inspiration, and since this in the past, they went all out and said, hey, these are their ancestors. So many people resemble each other. It's no way it's a coincidence. And we have the new Pokemon called Cleavor. And uh, he is a bug rock type and evolution of Scyther. And uh, he's obviously based on one of those J Japanese legends. I forget. And just like a boss battle. Or like a totem Pokemon in Sun and Moon. Yeah, beating these guys are tricky. Gotta use lots of items, balm, probably to calm it down. It's not as simple as just battling it, so they're going all out with the new creative ideas. Uh, we have we still have to wait and see, but yeah. And then of course we have Hisuian, uh, Zoroa, and Zoroark. Normal ghost type, the very first normal ghost types in the game. Man, the trailer that introduced them was pretty creative. Very very new. Uh, I'm excited about them. All the new Pokemon, the new evolutions, the new regional variants, the new characters. I cannot wait to play this game. Like, like the rumors alone about the starters, the, the, the graphics, the background, the battles, the new styles, the new concepts, the new story, the new mechanics, like the crafting, like the UI, the targeting, the Pokeballs, the interactions. The, the customization, the costumes, the setting, the time period, the characters. And we still don't know anything that like concrete about the story or the mechanics. We're just seeing tidbits. And I bet there's a lot of new Pokemon we still haven't seen yet that they're going to, going to introduce both evolutions, regional variants, and new Pokemon all together. Maybe, maybe not. And we still haven't seen any actual concrete uh, legendary Pokemon in the playthrough. We've just seen them in promotional trailers yeah so i cannot wait for this game to come out i'm really excited and you should be too if i'm being honest thank you guys for watching consider liking subscribing sharing with a friend i guess i'm when this game comes out i'm gonna play it so yeah if you want to see that like we'll, we'll we'll make something out of it and uh, i'll see you guys next time